We're back on the 71 Barracuda in the shop. Um, on this video, we're going to go over um, body gaps, panel alignment, and just fine tuning everything before the bodywork stage. So here's what we're starting out with the bumper. This is the um, passenger side, and it actually looks real good. But you could see on the driver side, the bumper's just sticking too far out, and it was too high. So the first thing we're going to do, I want to put a little more adjustability in the bumper up and down. So I'm just go ahead and I'm opening the holes up, going into rear balance um, to the bumper. After that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm starting to cut the bumper brackets. I ran this uh, half-inch tape, and that's actually what we're going to take off both sides of the bumpers. That should bring us in right in line with the edge of the quarter panel so the bumper looks flush and follows the body line right down you'll see in this picture right here you see we're about right in line following the arch now we just got to fix the quarter panel to bumper clearance and that's what we're going to do right now so with the cutoff wheel we just simply cut off the excess uh, where our line was and everything underneath after that we're just going to take a body hammer and just tap it into place and that's going to give our extra clearance. Once we get all our extra clearance we'll go ahead and take the welder and we're going to just you know stitch weld this whole corner back around. Just take your time it's not too bad with this you go a little bit faster since it is on the corner and there's a couple body arches here so I'm not too worried about warping the metal um, or anything like that. And after we clean it up with the grinder you can see this is what we're left with it's going to follow the curve of the bumper a lot more. So here we are, we're putting the bumper back on. Um, this bumper through this whole process, obviously like all these pounds, we're going to come on and off, I mean, tons of times. Just be prepared for that. But as you can see, the bumper's got to go up a hair more, but it really matches the curvature here. This is the passenger side. Again, it's just looking a lot better. It fits in the rear uh, tail panel a lot better. Everything's straight on the back end. All right, we're about done with our rear bumper uh, for the most part. Let's go ahead and move on to the trunk. We're going to use this paint stick as our reference. I believe it's about 3 It's about where I like to set my gaps. I think it gives a good balance between the two. Um, too big, too tight. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this paint stick and we're going to slide in. I want it to slide without hanging up, without gripping. That should give us plenty of room, but I also don't want too much side to side movement. It's, if it's a little bit, we're not going to nitpick this and you know, it's not, we don't have to go that far, but you can see we're starting up here in the corner, moving down. It's tight the whole way. And this corner right here is good. So I don't have to worry about that. Now with the paint stick, I'm also going to turn it this way and I'm going to go down the whole trunk gap and same thing I'm looking for if I'm looking here I want to make sure everything's straight and I don't see daylight under there so we're gonna move down and then that's gonna make sure they're lined up profiled that way side to side we got a nice smooth movement there I already can tell without doing it right there it's probably hard to see on the camera but the paint stick there's air gap right there so what we're going to have to do, I already can tell, and we're going to go ahead and mark this. So from here to about right here, we're going to have to come down. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So let's go ahead and finish marking our thing. I'm going to put a little down arrow there. And normally, you don't want to write on any filler or anything. I'm stripping this car down to bare metal, the whole exterior body. So I'm not too worried about writing on it with the marker. But if you're on a, um, any kind of primer or anything else, use a pencil, something that will come off. So same thing right here. We're actually also too tight. So we're going to work with that. This also has got to be separated. So from the area is good on the quarter panel. From the trunk right here in this rear package tray, um, rear deck filler panel, I'm sorry. Um, this has got to be come out. And I'll come in here with the tape measure a little bit and check the measurement. So from there to about where we're too high too. So that's actually good that we're going to have to modify both of them. 
So right there, we're going to have to actually back it off a little bit and go higher. We're looking good there. It's all tight. Coming around. And see, right here, it starts opening up again. You see that gap? So right there, I'd say, is where we're going to start. And then I know for a fact, all the way over here, over here into this curb is too much. So, I mean, really, we're looking at, looking at least fixing this whole curb right there. And we're going to close all that in. Now, there's a couple ways to do that, too. You could add TIG rod on the edge here and uh, TIG it up. You could MIG the corner. Um, what I think we're going to do, because I already can tell, looking at the profile of this, this all looks pretty decent right there. And when we start getting right about here, it starts dipping down. I mean, you could see on the camera the difference how high the trunk is here. But when we get over here, everything lines perfect. So if I try to mess with the trunk, we mess up the gap here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to prep this and we're going to cut this area, hopefully lift it up. While we're lifting it up, we're going to close this gap at the same time and then we'll work our way over here. So we're going to take it one section at a time. I think we're going to go ahead and do this area first. And then I also got, I already know because I was messing with this, the gap over here looks all right, but then we get down here at the very edge, you can't, right there on the corner, the gap closes up. So we're going to actually go through and we're going to open that area up. Um, that's what we're going to do. I'll show you some video. First, we're going to get prepped out, bare metal, the spots I'm going to mess with. And I'll go ahead and take the cutoff wheel and try to take you and walk you through the steps on how I would go about do this. This is not the only way to do it. This is a reference. We're going to try different techniques on this whole car to give you tools and different ways to tackle a project. Like I said, whatever, when you think about whatever's easiest for you to accomplish the task of closing the gap or opening the gap. I didn't say this earlier, but another major thing is you want this trunk about as centered and perfect as you can get it before you even touch this gaps. I'm lined up with the edge of the quarters. There's no more adjustment in this trunk that I can make to get these gaps closer in any direction. All right. So now we got this thing prepped. We're going to two birds, one stone um, deal. We're going to try to cut along this line, push this piece down. Level the two out while pushing it back. We're going to see what we can do. Not saying for sure if we can do that. Um, also, I want to know, I put spacers in. I'll, tell, I'll show you what they look like. And what the spacers do, you can see I can push down this trunk. And it's simulating having the weather strip. So this is the height that the trunk's going to be at. So I want to put that in there. You don't want to have this trunk off center and you're fighting it when, you know, you put the weather strip in after and it comes back up. So just a little note there. And I'll show you more on that on the doors. But let's go ahead and cut this and see what we got going on. Just like the rear bumper, we're using a cutoff wheel. Nothing crazy here just a straight line as straight as you can and you want to take the width that you're trying to open your gap up in this situation it's the same width as a cutoff wheel so it works out pretty good um, I'm checking it and I'm using my spacer my paint stick as my spacer and I'm adjusting everything pulling prying it up and down and just tacking everything in place every half an inch inch or so just to make sure I get my gap set and everything once I'm my gap set with the MIG welder, I went through and I'm going to TIG weld. Um, I think I could do the TIG weld. It's easier for me to do a solid run, less cleanup, and the weld just comes out so much better. So a lot of times, just for convenience, I'll MIG it um, just to set up. And then, like I said, I make a TIG run right after that. So here we are. We're doing the other side, the gap, and everything I showed you that was off. Um, I decided to leave the trunk on, obviously, just making it easy on myself it would have had to go on again to set our gaps after we pry this thing up so right now i could get the cutoff wheel in there we just take the little pry bar stick it up 
And what I'm going to do here, I'm actually making a spacer. Um, the gap was so big there that we need something to fill in. So we're going to use this metal. Um, I'm creating a template and we're basically going to just use this as a spacer welded in there. Here's our spacer and I just basically, I put some weld through primer on both sides of it. And what we do, we tack the corner and now we're going to simulate the same process as we did on the other side. But instead of it being cut, we're just welding in a new plate piece in its place. Um, so yeah, same thing, just every half an inch. We did the one side and I did the other side. And then now we'll go back through and follow and make sure our spacing is set perfect tacking it every inch or so again be prepared to go through and just keep adjusting um i mean you might have to cut off a a, a one or two weld that's why we're tacking now we just want to make sure everything's perfect and then when we get enough tacks in there we can make our straight run with our tig welder without warping anything or moving anything you know if you went ahead and been overzealous to weld this thing it's going to be s bent the whole way around so like i said just go slow put as many tacks as you can take your time on this um, same process now like i said we're done with the mig welder we're going to just run the tig welder on it and it's going to make cleanup easier less heat more concentrated area and it really puts a crisp corner on it versus stitch welding with the mig welder if you have a mig welder and that's all you can use it will work i do it many times if i don't have it cleaned up you can see our top area is all welded in. We're working down this corner with the same process. Um, I'd put a spacer on the top and then this corner just got really tight there. So what we're going to do is just basically cut off the corner, tap it in and do it just like we did the bumper. So we use our spacer and then we're going to just weld it and then we're just cleaning it up right now, finishing that weld off and just rounding everything to make it look clean. What I'm not showing here because I'm skipping through this process is I am opening and closing the trunk many times and just resetting everything. When you go prying and pulling on this stuff, make sure you relieve it by opening the door, open the hood, open the trunk, and then reclosing and make sure everything's still set in the right place. Um, we're just finalizing the welds right now before we clean it up. Um, you could see this whole corner had to be, you know, the gap had to be closed off. Um, it wasn't horrible, but you know, for the level we're trying to take this car as a show car, I want everything on this car to be better than factory. It's actually, if you know factory cars, these cars weren't known for the perfect gaps, but I want this one to be a lot better. This is what the weld looks like. Um, you could see why we take weld. It does come out, I think, a lot better. Looking down the gap, it's really straight for an all metal gap, especially now that it's cleaned up and this is the bare metal. It's, it will still need some filler to just clean up everything and just make it perfect, but it's good for now. All right, now we're done with the trunk and the rear bump. We're gonna move on to the driver's side door and then the passenger door. Uh, what we're looking at, the door, the quarters were put on and profiled basically off the door. So they're really close. And same thing with the front end. The front end was all set from the forward back. So gapping this car and fixing everything is gonna be easier because we spent more time earlier. But what we're looking at, this top piece right here, I don't know if you can see it, it's, it's curving out a little bit, just how the quarter panel sits. So we're gonna, just build up on that and kind of follow the profile of the door. Um, the door, we're gonna leave the curvature on the door because I know that's how the Barracuda is. This door is a factory door and untouched. Uh, our profile on the quarter is just arching a little bit more like that towards the bottom. You can see it's just a little bit looser down here and it got a little bit tight up here. So we are gonna try to, basically what I'm gonna try to do first I'm gonna take my body hammer and from the inside, I'm gonna hit this inside where the windows are in the rear and we're gonna try to move this bottom support piece on the front of the quarter that's welded to and we're gonna fix the gap that way. If we can't do that, then we'll go in here with some metal and weld it up and fix the door jam knowing the door itself is fine. So, I mean, but we're, we're barely off. That shouldn't be too bad. Then we're gonna move on to the front of this uh, door. And what we're looking at, we're a little bit gapped high up here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add TIG rod 
to the top of this door seam. And then also, I'll show you when we you know, move the camera and we actually do it, you'll see the hood's a little bit higher than the, um, and the door than the fender, just sitting low. So we're gonna go ahead and build up that corner to make this curve follow back. Besides that, the front of this fender, I could slide the stick down it. It feels good. I mean, the gap's a little bit tight. I might open it up in one area, but for the most part, we're good. Now, what I was showing with you on the trunk is I'm using the body shims, is what I'm basically using. As you can see, as we're prying and hammering on this door, it's not moving. We want it to stay still, and I know some people will put filler right here to close up the seams and lock the door in place. Some people will weld it or put a little bracket on it and screw it in. We're gonna use the factory door um, latches, and what I'm doing, I'm taking double-sided tape and where the rubbers would be, I'm putting these stoppers with rubber on top, just a small thick piece so it doesn't bend, and Velcro on the bottom. I could do a couple of these different sizes and I could shim them out so the door's where I want to do it and I could simulate the factory rubber. And with that, it doesn't hold solid. So when I go, I close the door, it's solid, and I just, I'm using the car how I feel it's gonna be when it's assembled. You know, we're not pushing anything, we're not fighting anything as we're trying to gap, push, and pull on this, especially if we use a body hammer or slide hammer and try to pull behind it. So just a little tip there. Let's get to these doors. Um, we'll see how hard they are. Maybe it'll hammer out. If not, we'll weld a little bit on them. I know we're gonna have to weld on the front, so I'll show you that. And uh... so like I said, we pull out the body hammer um, and we're gonna go ahead and we're relieving the metal from the outside, pushing it in, and we're stretching it out. And then right now, um, hitting the hammer towards the door, there's an inside brace in there. Between do both of those process, this slowly closing this gap, little by little. It's so small, you can't even see it on camera, even sped up like this. But I can feel the difference. Um, and you see when we're done in a second, it really paid off. This uh, door gap to quarter gap really came out really good. And then it was profiled really straight too. Now we got that door gap fixed up, uh, we'll go ahead and tackle the top. You see right there, there's just a big gap there. Um, the two edges didn't meet. Uh, the aftermarket tooling, I mean, it happens. Be prepared that this is the stuff you're going to have to fix. Real easy. We take the MIG welder, and I just filled it in. Um, we'll grind it down, and then now we're on to profiling um, the front door from the fender to the door itself. Uh, you could see I'm marking where the fender was rolled in in certain areas and we'll just take the slide hammer and I got an L hook on it basically and we're just pulling that fender out and it will go do the door once we're done with that. So pull out with the fender, hammer back in with the body hammer and you just keep adjusting back and forth until you get it right. Try not to go crazy and just do a little bit of time. You don't want to overstretch this metal. It kind of takes a little bit of a finesse here. Um, I'm also not pulling hard on the slide hammer. It is 11 pound slide hammer. Um, but you see after every couple hits, I go ahead and check exactly what I'm doing. And if I go a little too far, I just take the body hammer and readjust. But like I said, you don't want to put any dents in this thing. Um, it's kind of like putting heat to something. If you're using heat to shrink metal, you don't want to overdo it. It makes it a hundred times worse. So just start small and just keep checking. But you do this up and down every door and that's another reason why I said we have to use the spacers because we're pulling on this, the door would be moving in and out without those solid spacers. And you could see this door doesn't move. I also decided to open up this gap a little bit. It just was a little bit too tight on the top. So we took the flap disc, we cut it down. Um, you can see just going over it a couple times again, less is more here. Now we're gonna have to weld up this gap because we did go past it and split the seam. Um, so at that point, just know you're gonna have to actually open the gap a little bit further. So when you weld it up and then regrind it, it's back to where you want it. So we're gonna use the MIG welder here. It's easier to get in with the MIG welder. And a lot of these corners, they're really hard to clean. And the TIG welder will just start popping and catching the, um, 
the tungsten. So a lot of times I will use the MIG welder on this. Be aware after you weld up this gap, it's going to want to curve in from the heat shrinking. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to go back through with your slide hammer again and re-pull out this corner of the fender or anywhere else you weld on. I also like to round off the corners there. Um, now we're on to the top fender to the hood area. Like I said, we're going to use a TIG rod as our filler rod here, and I'm just uh, tacking it in place. You could also MIG weld this rod. Um, again, I was able to get the TIG welder in there. We're going to pull the fender off after this, so then I'll go ahead and weld the back of it. My TIG settings, I'm um, uh, 332nd. I'm using on this 16 inch filler rod and a red tungsten. Here's a couple pictures of uh, the door gap to fender and quarter gap all done. All right, now that we finished the front and rear door gaps and they're straight, everything looks good on them, uh, we're gonna go ahead and address the rocker. Um, it's gonna be hard to see when the car is on the ground, but I'm gonna know it, so we're gonna fix it. So if you look right here, I don't know if you can see, this part of the rocker is in line with the door. When we get around this area, you can actually see if I hold this straight like that, the door starts hitting the rocker. And then same thing, it fixes itself towards the front. So we're gonna mark it, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna pull this rocker. We're actually gonna pull it on the inside. So we're good with the rocker profile about right here is where we start coming out, just the start of it. Then we're really going almost all the way to the lead over here. We're going to pull it in. Actually, might as well pull it all the way right to where we got the lead and adjust a little bit. So let's go ahead and cut this thing. Um, we'll mark the inside of it. So where I'm going to cut is going to be right on this rocker seam right there and I'm actually I marked it too much we're actually going to go right there and our starting point is going to be right there and then we're going to just tap this rocker up and in so let's go ahead and do that and then we'll weld it if you don't want to use a cutoff wheel one of those metal reciprocating saws the pneumatic ones would also work really good here let's see if that's going to be enough See, that array looks really good right there. I think now we're going to actually take it down a little bit more in one more section. That area looks good right there. We're not going to mess with that. I think this area right here, now we just got to take a little bit more off. So let's remark that. And, and the rocker naturally want to roll up in, in there, which makes me say that maybe someone messed with this and put it on the pass and just kind of got it too far out or something. Who knows with these old cars. So right now, the next one, I'm going to go from there to the same thing, our gap right there. We're going to just recut that just a little bit more, basically shaving a hair more off of it. In this instance, I'm using this cutting wheel more as a grinding wheel to get this job done. Oh yeah, you see that went up there real nice. Now if we take our stick, wherever it went, right here. You see now we're profiled real nice with the door. I don't even have to push it in there. It looks like it's going to, maybe back here, I'll just tap it in a little bit to get that gap closed there. But besides that, we're profiled with the door. So we'll go ahead. I'm going to MIG and tack this area up. Um, you can see I did it right in the corner. So we're going to MIG it every inch or so. And then I'm going to run the TIG bead through it just because it's going to be easier to just do one pass. I'm not super worried about heat because this is a real strong area. But we'll go ahead and MIG and TIG this and I'll show you a picture when it's all said and done. And then this whole door on this side is done and we'll go start the other side. Here's the TIG weld. I would say if you want, this is a great area to MIG weld. Uh, you don't have to worry about heat, warpage or anything and it's easy to grind. All right. We're done with the driver's side, so on to the passenger side. We split the car around to make the uh, filming easier. Uh, the difference on this one, 
instead of closing up the gap, this side, we're too tight. So we're gonna have to open up this gap just a little bit. Same thing with the front of this door. We're gonna kind of open and close certain areas. So um, I'll show you this process. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna modify the door and grind it and re-weld the seam back up because the quarter panel arch looks really good and it's right in line with the door. So we're not gonna even mess with that. So what we're gonna do, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm gonna make a mark where we want to, as a reference, where we're going to grind to coming down. So all I'm doing is I'm tracing my stick down. And that's going to give us our reference point. And my gap now, I want to grind this whole black mark down. And that should give me my gap where we got to be. See, working down here, that part looks all right. And I'm using the stick on the edge of the quarter panel as my reference. So yeah, let's go ahead and start grinding that door down. I can't stress this enough. When you're grinding, just take your time. Um, grind a little bit, close the door, grind a little bit more. It's better to do that than go way too far and have to weld up a huge gap. Now you can see that about matches the arc we want looking down. There's one more spot down there I'll clean up. But for the most part, we got to do up top here too. I didn't do that area. So we'll clean this area up down there, but that's what we're doing. We're grinding it down and we basically spread the lip open on the door because we went too far. So now we got to go back through and weld up that whole seam. You know, it's a balance in that too, because you got to go a little bit past it before you weld it up. And then you clean up your weld after that. And then that gives you your new seam and your arch. A good takeaway here, um, when you grind up the lip on the door, it's going to want to separate. So put some clamps on it, as many as you can, and then go ahead and what I'm doing here, I'm tacking it every inch with the MIG welder. I can do this with the TIG welder. Just getting around the clamps is more of a pain in the butt. Um, but again, I like to tack with the MIG welder, and then what I'll do, I'll go through with the TIG welder and weld everything up and then your MIG welds you're just using that it's the same filler rod so it just blends it right in with no problem another reason I'm using the TIG welder is when you go you'll see in a second we hammer the door back out because the metal shrinks inward it's going to be easier and it's not going to try to crack or fight you like a MIG weld you can actually hammer this and get it really close before you even grind down the weld so you're not grinding too much so here I am checking it the weld before hand so as I said I'm hammering dolly the door out um, I'm using a hardwood dolly uh, shout out to my buddy Dave who made this thing that was really cool he went over the top on this I asked for you know a hardwood dolly and it's all different colors glued together and he spent hours hand shaping it so thanks man but I do like the hardwood dolly um, it doesn't put as much strain on the door and it, it just it, it's easier to work for me in a situation like this. So um, what I'm doing, I'm working the door. You might have to work the quarter panel, but I did install these quarter panels and I already profiled them in line with the door. So they were pretty close to perfect before we even started this process. So what we're doing now, we're just fixing the door metal that we shrunk from the weld. And you see, once we do that, we're just cleaning up the edges. You want to get your door in line almost perfect before you clean up the edges because your gap's going to change the more you start bending it in and out. As you can see here, we got the gap fixed. We're just tidying up the very last little bit. Again, checking it a bunch of times. Uh, here's the front gap looking pretty good. And then uh, this is it profiled down the side. All right, so we're messing with this aftermarket hood right now. And honestly, not really happy with how it's coming. I talked to the owner and talked about some options on what we can do. Just being that uh, this is a Golden Star hood. It's the only one we can get at the time. 
and where I think this car is going to be and where we want to take it with the gaps being perfect and everything else, this hood isn't uh, making the cut. Uh, we had to flatten it out. It was trying to curve too much here. It's still low over here, low over here on the gaps. And I've been trying to work this high spot out and I could maybe raise the front um, cowl vent um, up on the car. We got this side lined up pretty good, but it just, after all this work we're trying to do, I think what we talked about doing, we found a 318 flat hood and we're going to see how it fits on this car and then convert it over into the shaker hood. I think the factory hood, you know, it's 50 something years old. Um, the one we found might uh, be real solid. I think it's be a good candidate for do what we're doing if it fits a lot better than this hood. So what we'll do, we'll make sure we get it to fit. Whichever hood fits better, we're going to go with that route on this car. So as you can see, it looks like the flat hood's going to win. It just doesn't have the curvature in the center. Everything lined up so much better. Um, it just, the aftermarket tooling, I think what it was when the factory stamped the center, they put too much of a curve and stress on the frame of the hood. But here we are. We did have to gap this side on the fenders. Um, it was too tight of a gap. So same thing we did in a trunk. We just took a cutoff wheel cut it down the middle and then we're bending it back to get our right gap and then we migged it and then now we'll go through again and TIG weld it. Um, again we're keeping the heat out of the fender it's going to be with the TIG weld limited amounts of body work compared to if you're going to MIG the whole thing but it is possible to MIG the whole thing if you have to. So now that the hood's gapped on both sides, we're going to go ahead and fix the profile issue between the front upper, uh, upper cowl and the hood itself. You can see the curvature just doesn't line up. I'm going to say it's probably this aftermarket piece. Um, it just, in the center, you could see how much higher it is than the hood. It almost looks like we got two little dips in it trying to follow the hood bend in the middle um, so I'm just using the paint stick we're finding our arch and I marked it what we're gonna go ahead and do I drilled out the spot welds and we're using the air chisel and we're gonna just pop the front skin actually off the frame once we relieve it um, we can go ahead and kind of slightly modify it and follow the curve push it up and down where we want and then we'll go ahead and re-weld it back up so we did relief cut it. You already can see it's a little bit better already. Um, I decided to go ahead and double check that side. I'm not trying to cut anywhere that it is in line, but looking, it was just easier to pretty much take most of this hood off. So now we're on with the air hammer on the other side, removing the spot welds. Um, again, we're just relieving the whole hood. And actually, once I did pull the spot welds, the hood actually popped up. It naturally did want to go. So it makes me think that maybe this hood was down a little bit too far too. Same as everything else, this is a work a little bit on it, test it out. But you could see, compared to what we were looking at in the previous video, that hood looks so much better. Both of those curves and arches just profile so nice. So we'll go through it. There's one area that's a little bit high. Um, so we're going to go ahead and clamp that down. It's going to be right here. It's just a little too high. You see where I'm pushing it down. So we'll take a clamp and we're going to clamp that down. The rest of it did profile real nice. The corners worked out really well. And it just things like this make a big difference, especially when you're trying to put filler on the edge of a hood. Same thing as a door. It's just bad practice because it's something you're always slamming. So you want to get these corners. It's so tedious and it's so small and the rest of the hood look good. So it only would have been the edge. But to me, that's where you start chipping the edges and corners when they're not lined up. You can see I'm just slowly checking. I'm actually right here marking all the good spots where they're really good. And I know we got the high coming up. So you'll see in a second, we'll actually put down arrows on the highs. And you could see right there on the front cow, that little bit of air gap is what I'm looking at right there. And you could see as I'm pushing it down, it actually is relieving down. So it's good. We know we have some play in it that the hood no problem fixing this. 
since I can't show you everything, I'll tell you this hood and most of these spots that are good is already pre-tacked into place just lightly in case I had to cut them off. I did leave that one high spot off. Now we go through and we're going to go ahead and weld it. Um, this only had four or five factory spot welds in the whole front of the hood. I put one every inch and a half, two inches, um, just 3 16 drill bit. I used a deburrer tool to really get in there. And you could see we're also going to have to clean out and uh, um, sandblast underneath this hood. Um, it's from, like I said, a 50-year-old car, and it's been sitting outside. It's obviously not in perfect shape. But before we really put the work into the hood and converting it to a shaker, I wanted to make sure it was going to fit on this car. Um, welding up these spot welds, just like anything else around the car you've seen in the past, nothing different here. Hopefully this video on the panel alignment and gapping really helped you out. In summary, taking a paint stick, you're just making sure all your gaps line up. Also, take some kind of straight edge paint stick and make sure your two gaps here aren't rolling in. The reason you don't want to do that is if we're packing this corner here with Bondo, A, you'll see the variances and the door will look super thick. You can usually go to a car show and spot who skipped this step and just overcompensate with filler. The reason we don't want filler, besides it looking sharp and crisp, is if we have filler on these corners, there's a greater chance they're gonna hit something, chip something, being on the edge, and it's gonna come off, and then now your real nice paint job and all your work's destroyed. So we focus on, stripped all the corners down, got them to bare metal, and then I went back through and I went and I epoxy primered my other areas just to make sure they don't rust. As you could see, we did a lot of work on the hood. We were messing with it um, and I, we didn't like that aftermarket hood. I think this flat hood's the way to go. In the next video, we're gonna try and install a, fa uh, a shaker like they would from the factory from this flat hood. So stay tuned for that. I don't think anyone's really doing that. So we're gonna see what we can do with that. Um, we got the hood pretty much lined up. You see we fixed this whole front cowl panel. Everything looks a lot better on it. It's just these aftermarket parts, they're just, it's so hard to get them aligned that this is the step I think that's the most crucial in building these cars and take the time on the metal work and this alignment because I think when you start doing the body work, it's gonna really take off. So hopefully this video helped you give you some tips, tricks, and scenarios in different ways that you can do it in your shop. Please uh, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. We're going to just do a couple shots um, of the car and the panel gap and looking when it's all done. Um, so you just can see the final product, everything in metal um, before it goes to epoxy and just see the work it's done. I mean, this car does look laser straight for what it is. You got to remember, there's no filler on this car at this point in time. Um, not going to be unrealistic this car is going to need filler in some spots it's got some ripples here or there but for the most part the the profiling on all the panels looks really good the gaps on it look really good the bumpers fit good um it's just it was well worth it when you look at it this close that it's hard to nitpick this car even with no filler and i think with the filler it's just going to clean it up in the bodywork and everything else so again, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Hope you like what we do. Uh, like, subscribe. Um, any questions, uh, just reach out and hit us up. Have a good day and uh, good luck with your project.